And last up, we have our component blending modes. Now, unlike our previous blending modes, we don't have to worry about clipping because we're just taking something from one layer and applying it in replace of another layer. So what does that mean? Let me demonstrate. So let's say we've got this image and let's say we've got a solid color of meh, maybe this bright blue. So notice that the hue here is this blue and it's fairly saturated, it's high up there. All right, and it's also fairly bright. Okay, and I, I just got to those by toggling through each of them. Let me put it back to the standard hue, tell it okay. So we've got a color. Now if we come over to our blending mode, we could take the hue and apply it to the saturation and luminosity of the layers below it, the composite background, if you will. So now it has the luminosity and the saturation of whatever's below, but it has the hue of this blue. Well, what if we wanted the saturation of the blue? Not a problem. We could take that high saturation and make everything incredibly saturated. All right, but what if we want that high saturation and that blue? Well, hue and saturation equal color. So we'll just apply the color to everything. So frequently when people just apply an overall color, things will change in saturation and we'll throw them off a bit. If you just apply a hue, then you'll end up frequently with a lot more grays, but it will be more true to the underlying image. Now, what if we wanted just that luminosity of this solid image? Now, I don't know why you'd want this. It's a solid image. The luminosity doesn't change any, but the color and saturation of what's below. Well, you've got that choice too, so you can end up with this one uh, luminosity, this constant luminosity, but then just get the color of whatever is below it. Now, I think that that's more interesting if we had a pure gray. So if I pop this to... 128 all down the line or you know what would be easier let me just do this put down my notes which i have in my other hand i'll put hue and saturation at zero and brightness just at 50 percent tell it okay so now look at that we have boom just the color coming on and the saturation coming in from below so it can create a very strange and interesting effect uh, let's try it with black now we can't really see anything. Black's kind of taking over because guess what? It has a luminosity of zero. But if we crank it up to white, we'll have the opposite problem because now we have 100% luminosity all across the board. By having gray, we have a neutral luminosity essentially for everything else. So let's have a little more fun with this. If we were to, instead of having a color fill, have a new layer that's a gradient and then set this to luminosity, then we get this strange effect and we can flip that around easily enough, just drag in the other direction and voila. So you can create some interesting effects with it, but by itself, that's essentially it. It's the hue, the, lum the hue or the saturation or the hue and saturation, in other words, color, uh, or the luminosity of the layer above being applied to the layer below. So let's try that on our amber. So if we have normal mode, we just have this, this rock, but we could take the hue. So we have all of these oranges, which it's a very human color. So she still looks more or less normal. The saturation, things get a little strange because that chunk of amber has wildly different saturation across it. You can see some high saturation areas and some low saturation areas. And we get in fact, some high saturation areas and some low saturation areas. We could do luminosity, which is very strange in this case because, well, it's a rock. But let's flip that around. We'll put it on normal mode and we'll put it uh, below. And now we encounter an issue. Our model here has several modes applied to her, blending modes applied to her in order to uh, make her as bright as possible. So what do we do here? Well, one thing you could do is just toss it in a smart object by uh, right-clicking and converting to a smart object. Oops. Uh, the other thing you could do if you don't want to deal with uh, smart objects being embedded again and again is actually put it in a group, which is this, this little folder here, which now contains our composite image. And this group, you'll notice it says pass through. So whatever's happening is happening. 
but we can set the entire group to something as well such as luminosity. Now, if you expand out the group, you'll see that it is in fact being affected by each of the blends. And on top of that, if we were to clip directly to her and nothing below, just to demonstrate, as compared to without it, the clipping mode doesn't really make a difference. And the reason is that the group is containing it, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, if you want to be paranoid, I can't remember if older versions of Photoshop were quite as adaptive as the current ones, go ahead and use the clipping option by alt-clicking between the layers or by going up to layer, create clipping mask. In this case, I'd release it since I've already done it prior to grouping it. And then you'll be set and you won't have to worry about anything. So on this group, this whole group, we can just set it to luminosity or to color or to saturation or to hue. So in luminosity, I think that's a little more interesting because now we have this uh, human being projected onto the colors of the amber. So I find that quite fascinating. In short, that's it. Um, that's what those uh, component modes do. Are, uh, sometimes they're called the component hue saturation lightness modes because it's just a different way of talking about color. We have hue, saturation, and color, which is just hue and saturation combined, and luminosity, and we're just applying that to whatever's below. Um, that's really all there is to it. I think that it's uh, pretty fascinating. Uh, of course, if you had something by itself, like let's say, just turn these guys off, if you just had this candy a couple of times, and the candy was normal and not some kind of strange hard light mix. If you just had this candy a couple of times and you set it to color, nothing will change because the color or saturation or hue or luminosity of this is identical to the one below it. They're the same image, but you can have some fun. Let's go ahead and do a, uh, well, let's do color. And then with the move tool, just going to turn these guys off with the move tool, slide this over a little bit. Now you can see you can get some interesting effects just by offsetting the image. I'll just move it over a little bit. Looks like a, a printing issue. We can do that with the hue, with the saturation, with the luminosity will be pretty much the same as the color, but in the opposite direction because it's just moving the luminosity of an identical image. Now keep in mind you can do that with all of these. So if you wanted to do a weird divide or subtraction or exclusion or difference or hard mix or pin light, any of these things, you can have this weird offset if you so choose to have such a strange offset going on. One other thing, since this didn't take too long, uh, I'll just go ahead and load this into this video here. Uh, let me pop her back into a, or pull her out of the group. I'll just drag her outside of the group. Boom. And throw this group away. I glossed over this quickly, but let's say that this, uh, that, that we did in fact have this in a smart object. By right clicking and going to convert to smart object, we can apply a filter and we'll be doing this a lot later on, but just any of the filters you remember from previous semesters are fine. So we'll go over to a filter crystallize tell it okay smart objects get smart filters and smart filters get blending modes so you can do some fun stuff with blending modes going straight in now uh, for this upcoming assignment you don't really need to do this you shouldn't need to do this but you know uh, it, it's faster than duplicating the image doing a filter adjustment and then putting it in a blending mode so you don't you, you don't have to, let me demonstrate. So this is just a soft light with a crystallize, but if we wanted to instead go about this way, say I'd either merged it, da merged it down or converted it to a smart object, I could also just duplicate it. I'm just gonna rasterize this real quick. So let's say that we had just a standard object, a standard object, a standard layer. If we applied a crystallize effect, now I can put this to all those same effects and that will be in the spirit of the upcoming assignment. And you can see some really fun stuff happening in here very quickly. And keep in mind that some of these will be affected differently with your uh, 
blending modes with your blending mode sorry with your opacity versus your fill opacity and that's multiply color burn linear burn color dodge linear dodge add vivid light linear light hard mix difference uh, i've said it a whole bunch of times hopefully you wrote one of them down but uh, i'll post some notes online and on the class so you can uh, just read through them if you so wish but here's multiply just turn that down a bit and i think it's kind of interesting with crystallize a crystallized version above the other one here it is just on normal mode as compared to multiply. So again, uh, for this upcoming assignment, you don't really need to do any filters. And in fact, I strongly discourage you. And I might even get a little annoyed if you do filters because you don't have to do them. But it's interesting how you can in fact apply filters. So uh, there you have it. That is all 27 standard blending modes. Woo! So hopefully after watching these videos, you don't have to hunt and pack. You can have an idea of where you want to go before getting into uh, which one to choose. Okay, see you next video.